Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today's video, as you can probably see by the wonderful setup that we have here on my desk, is going to be another video involving the famous $5 Windows 98 PC. Now yes, I've done many many videos on this computer, in fact I've got a whole playlist up there in the cards right now um, just dedicated to videos that I do on this computer and today we're going to be doing another one of those uh, experiment type videos. Um, we're going to be installing Windows 95 on this machine, but we're not just going to be using a standard CD because, well, that would just be too easy. No, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing Windows 95 from all of these beautiful floppy diskettes right here. And let me just pan the camera down and show you just what we're looking at. What we have here are 29, look at this, I'm going to spread them out, 29, I'm going to get these all mixed up. 29 different Microsoft and Windows 95 setup disks. Now what's interesting about these, if you can't already tell, is that uh, they're all different colors. We've got these gray ones over here, or these beige ones, these red ones, and the yellow ones here. Um, I got these at, uh, at a garage sale about a year or so ago, and I don't know if these, I mean, they've got like a genuine looking Microsoft sticker here, but I'm pretty certain that uh, Windows 95 and any Microsoft OS never came on a Fujifilm uh, floppy disk. But I don't know if somebody just bought the stickers and put them on here or did a very good job at actually recreating the uh, stickers that would go on here. But this is what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get these back in order because I literally just dropped them. Um, onto the table here, which is not what I meant to do. Alright, so we've got them all back in order, and there you go. That is a good chunk of three and a half inch floppy diskettes. Now, it does say on here that these are uh, the high density disk. I mean, it, it says it right up there, but it also says right here that these are 1.44 uh, megabyte high density floppy diskettes. Um, and this is the, basically what I'm doing here is this is the, the largest amount of uh, floppy disks that I have for a single Windows install. At least I'm pretty certain of that. Now I know that some of you guys are already saying, come on Michael, why would you want to do this when you can literally just take a beautiful CD, we have this wonderful CD technology here, you can just take this, all of this information right here can fit on this one little disk, put it into that computer and we can install Windows 95. That my friends, would be too easy. And that's why I'm not interested in doing that for this video because we're going to add a little bit of uh, interestingness to this video and a little bit of an endurance test, if you will, to see if I can actually sit through installing a 29 floppy diskette version of Windows 95 knowing that there is a much easier option out there. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get started with disk number one. I'm going to go ahead and put this into the wonderful 98 computer. I'm going to try to get a decent setup here. Now we are currently running Windows 98 on this machine. Um, I don't know if I install, I think that I did a video uh, reinstalling Windows 98 on this computer. I believe it was actually the Indiana University edition of Windows 95. Very, very interesting, by the way. So we should just be able to put in this diskette, restart the machine into MS-DOS mode, and away we go. And that's what we're going to be trying. So here is diskette number one, putting it into the floppy drive right now. And let's see if this is even Windows 95. I uh, failed to actually check that. I'm just assuming that this is Windows 95. And yes, it looks like it actually is. We've got a setup file. Uh, what looks like some Windows. Yeah, so we got scan disk, save 32. Um, it's going to read me here and see Windows 95. There you go, August 1995. So this was, yeah, this is the, the very first version. That's probably why there's so many diskettes because I have another um, diskette uh, version of Windows 98, but it's not on 29 diskettes. It's on, uh, I think, like 15 or 16. So that's probably one of the newer versions, or maybe that's just an upgrade version. That could also be something. This is a standalone install on 29 diskettes. All right, so unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a way to keep all of these um, floppy diskettes. And no, this isn't all of them. I just didn't want to pick them all up again uh, to keep them all in frame. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I'm changing. Uh, the disk gets all the way, of course, up to number 29. But so this is a copy of Windows 95. That's just what I wanted to confirm there. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the machine. We're going to restart in MS-DOS mode. And this should allow us to go to the A drive here. And um, we're going to, let's just, uh, can we just do setup? I mean, we already have the partitions configured. 
but we obviously do need to format them. I wonder if the setup will allow us to do that, because... Yeah, let's see. Let's press enter and see. Because we are basically downgrading Windows, because we're running Windows 98 right now. Alright, so here we are. Welcome to Windows 95 setup. Uh, that was way easier than I thought. Um, now, Windows 98 is still installed, so I don't know if it's going to allow us to just write over that or what. Because I didn't run FDisk or Format or anything because we're on the C drive, you know, and this is not a bootable diskette. And yes, this is going to be way slower than uh, the CD-ROM. That's another advantage of the CD-ROM right here, is everything is a lot quicker. So, um, we're gonna sit here and listen to some drive-seeking sounds. Oh yeah, 2%. This is... This is going to take a while. I don't know if I'm going to leave this completely unedited because this would be like a 20 hour long... Oh, disc two. All right, let's insert disc two. Pulling out disc number one. And here's disc number two. Let's see if we get to 4%. Let's press OK here. All right, disc number three. So we got about halfway done with that loading prompt there. So disc number two is done. We're on to number three. Gonna insert that. Let's press enter. A whole lot more to go, that's for sure. <laughs> we gonna need disc number four to load the net. Oh no, okay. So we're going to press yes, we're gonna agree. We're going to press next. We're going to install to see Windows. I wonder if it's just going to, I mean, because the Windows 95 file, or the Windows 98 files are still there, so uh, let's just go to custom, because I want to install basically everything. Okay, set up as a technique the disk has already been used to set up Windows 95. It is acceptable for the legal owner to reinstall this product in order to update an existing copy. You can continue this install, but should be aware that this product is protected by copyright law and international treaties. So I guess this is like a piracy warning saying that, yeah, so it's, it's saying like you already have Windows 95 installed and it's acceptable for the legal owner to reinstall it, but I guess not for somebody else. So this product is protected by copyright law. Okay. Um, we'll just have it find the hardware for us. We have a CD-ROM drive. I don't think we have a network adapter. Um, so we're here at 82, oh wow, the entire system is frozen. Yeah, quite literally the entire system has locked up. I can't move the mouse. Um, I can eject. But there is no disk activity, and it says if there's no disk activity for a long time, turn your computer off, do not press control delete, then turn it back on, run setup, and choose safe recovery. All right, so we're back. Um, it has been a little while since it has, uh, or since it began uh, to start hanging on this screen here. So I think what we're gonna do is just restart the uh, install process and I'm going to actually format the hard drive using MS-DOS. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do that. So I'm gonna eject this diskette from the drive. So we're gonna have to go through those three disks again. Um, I might not actually include that in this video though, but we're gonna uh, put in our MS-DOS diskette and uh, turn off the machine. This is what we should have done from the start, but I just wanted to see if we could actually get it uh, working from within Windows 98, which it looks like obviously we're not going to be able to. So we're going to actually, it should just uh, give us a, a, a prompt to actually boot up. All right, so here we are in the MS-DOS setup. We're going to just go through this really quickly here. Uh, computer is already running a version of DOS. Um, all right, we'll just exit out. Um, let's just format it. I believe there is a format command on here. Yep. There we go. So we are formatting our... Oh yeah, this, so by the way, this is like an 80 gig hard drive that's in here, but DOS only recognizes about 2 gigs of that. So we're using like not even 2% of... Um, of uh, the entire hard drive space. So yeah, we're just gonna format it, and I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it actually just started storming outside, so sorry if you guys hear those uh, bursts of, you know, thunder throughout this video. All right, there we go. So now we should be able to type uh, setup. All right. 
right, so we're going to set up MS-DOS now. The settings are correct. Oh, it's got that uh, correct date in there. That's awesome. We're going to install the CDOS. And now is a great time to fill out your registration card. When you send it in, Microsoft will keep you up to date on the latest product improvements and let you know about related Microsoft products. Isn't that amazing? I think I actually have one of those. <laughs> Um, I thought about uh, doing like a video and actually sending it in, but I've seen other videos of people doing exactly that and it just gets returned as undeliverable mail because the address that Microsoft had on there isn't uh, in existence anymore or it's not owned by Microsoft anymore. So yeah, one thing about floppy disks, if you guys didn't know already, is there's a lot of waiting around, but this is how people used to install software. Um, man, that is, that is a storm out there. Um, but yeah, that is why the, the, the CD-ROM was so revolutionary, because you could fit 700 megabytes, and you could just fit, you could fit like one and a half, not even one and a half, on uh, one of these right here. Um, so you could store a lot more information on one of these CD-ROMs right here. It's also much faster. Um, optical drives are generally uh, quicker than floppy disk drives. And see, this is what I was saying, is these are usually what regular Microsoft diskettes look like. There's no branding. Whereas these here have Fujifilm branding, so I'm fairly certain that, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that these are official, but somebody either, like, because this, this looks like the real sticker. I mean, I don't know, maybe these are real uh, Microsoft diskettes, but there's no sign of peeling or anything like that. And this is a real sticker, I mean, it's not like it's a, you know, like a, a sheet of paper taped onto this. I mean, this is a real sticker. Be sure to let me know, guys, if you guys have seen any Microsoft uh, diskettes like these before, because I personally haven't. But I'm just willing to guess that this is a user-made copy with just some really um, awesome skills in terms of putting a very legitimate-looking sticker. Man, I just got to get used to this, because this is going to be... For the next like two hours what i'm gonna be listening to this thunder outside and the uh sounds of a three and a I almost a three and a quarter three and a half inch floppy drive there it is right there reading away let's go ahead and kind of zoom in on that for a minute so you guys can truly experience uh the beauty of oh of course now it just stops right as i'm trying dang it i mean come on man really all right so we're going to remove all of the diskettes from the drives we're going to press enter and we're going to press enter to restart. Now we should have a freshly formatted 80 gig drive with only two gigs used um, on that drive. And we're going to con you know, proceed with the Windows 95 installation. So we're going to restart with disk number one. I'm probably just going to go ahead and cut the video here and come back when we're, we were at like this number four, right? So I'm just going to uh, cut back to that point so you guys don't have to literally see the entire thing again. By the way, guys, here's a little in-video poll that uh, you guys might find interesting. So I recently picked up uh, this sealed in-box Microsoft Home Mouse, the ideal mouse for everyone in your home. Check that out. This is uh, from the mid-90s, I believe. See, it says works with Windows 95 or Windows 3.1. I paid $3 for this at a thrift store recently. It also comes with Microsoft Arcade. So um, be sure to vote um, up in the poll right now, up in the cards, if you guys want to see me unbox this on video. Yes, it is sealed, and yes, I know that I'm going to have a, a few people, probably more than a few people, saying leave it in the box, and I'm kind of wondering if I should leave it in the box um, to do at a later date or just never open it because it is sealed. Um... Or just go ahead and, and um, open it up like I did with that IBM mouse. So be sure to uh, let me know because I would definitely love to hear um, what you guys think about this. All right, so we are back. And a couple of things have happened since the last clip. It turns out that uh, doing a fresh install of MS-DOS uh, did not fix that hanging issue that we were having before. The entire installer froze at 82% when it was trying to uh, detect the hardware on the system. And uh, I let it sit for about uh, 20 minutes, and it just didn't get past that screen. So that's definitely longer than it says that it should take. Um, it came up once it rebooted again, and I actually went through this uh, through the first portion of this install right here. Um, it actually came up and said that it's going to skip the portion that made it freeze before. So hopefully it will do that for us. And so this is where it says, setup and current error while it was detecting which hardware devices you're using. It can attempt to re-detect your hardware and bypass the hardware cause the error, or you can modify the list that setup will detect. 
Um, I'm just going to let it redetect and bypass the hardware that caused the error, and we'll see if that allows us to uh, get past this screen. It was on this screen right here, analyzing your computer where it froze. Okay, good. So it got past 82%. That's what it was freezing on before. Um, so I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what it was um, that was causing it to freeze. But, uh, and I didn't select CD-ROM because I thought that the CD-ROM drive uh, might have something to do with it freezing as well. We can always install that later. I'm just trying to get this thing installed before I even worry about the, uh, getting drivers installed because I gotta go through 32 diskettes here. Um, now, just to make this so that we actually utilize all of these diskettes, we're gonna try to install every option that Windows 95 gives us here. So we're going to definitely want to install the Microsoft Network, Microsoft Mail, and Microsoft Fax. Uh, and we're just going to want to install all this crap here. So let's go ahead and we definitely want to get the briefcase, character map, desktop wallpapers, games, mouse pointers, net watcher. Uh, we want to get the online user's guide, the quick view, system monitor. We're getting everything here because we want to utilize... Um, oh, 15. What, what am I missing? Okay, why is there... Oh, that's why we want to get flying windows. Okay. Okay, so that, that should be everything. Uh, one, one of one, 11 of 11, two of two. Yep, that is every option that it allows us to pick. That is what we have just selected. It says it's, it's going to need 101.3 megabytes, and we have, of course, two gigs on this disk. So let's, uh, let's begin here. Um, now, we don't have a proper network configuration, so we're going to just skip this here. Um, we'll call this uh, 95 box, not box, uh, computer description, I will just not put anything there. Um, display, we're just going to go with the standard driver there, uh, standard keyboard layout, standard PC, unknown monitor, it's pretty much got, yeah, it, it's got all of the stuff. What can you change in the user interface? Oh, that's right, yeah, you can go back to the 3.1 program manager if you want to, but we're going to keep that on 95 for now. We don't want a startup disk, we don't need one. And this, my friends, is the fun part. At least, well, I mean, for you guys, you guys get to watch me put 32 floppy diskettes, or not 32, 29, that was close, 29 floppy diskettes into this drive over here. I'm just gonna kind of try to pan the camera like that so you can see everything. Yay, setup had trouble copying a file. Okay. That isn't good. What what file is it? Could not finish copying pppmac.vxd. Uh, I guess we'll skip it. I hope it's the only file. Oh, so it just failed again to copy a file. Which file is this? spap.vxd. Okay, we'll skip it. It's n not a good sign. Alright, what file is it this time? billadd.dll. Okay, so this looks like it's uh, gonna be for the Microsoft network. There doesn't appear to be like a skip all button, and it's probably a good thing because there are some drivers that, you know, the system needs to work properly, and if it can't get them, it just won't install, but uh, it's also annoying because we're going to have to, every time that it comes up with one of those things, just press skip file, skip file, skip file. But we're still on disk number 17. It's still locked at 70%, so we're going to be sitting here for a while going through this. I'm, I'm probably going to speed this up because this is a 30 minute recording already and then added on to the other 30 minute recording. This is going to be like an hour and like, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to have, it's going to be a very long um, editing session. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly thinking that every file on this disk is just not because like it's just not working which is not a good sign because it's still at 70 percent all right so i think we're getting past it now yes we're on 71 percent okay good i don't know if you guys can see that down i'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in on it we made it to 71 percent check that out that is that is beautiful um i guess there was a problem with disc 17 i literally just took it out um put in disc 18 and uh just bypassed what was on disk 17. There, there was like one file left that it was uh, trying to copy over. 
Oh no, it's, it's doing it again. Oh man, come on. Alright, what file is it this time? Explore.exe. What? <laughs> well, that's like critical to the OS. What? Maybe there's nothing on these. Maybe these are blank. That could be something. Let's hit browse. I, I would like to see what's actually on this. Well, there's a .cab file on it. Win95 underscore 17 .cab. I would think that's... But that's the only thing on it. I would think that's all it needs, so I, I don't understand why it's not able to find anything. I mean, man, I didn't think this would be so hard. I thought this would be just like putting in uh, floppy disk after floppy disk, but... Man, that is a... <sighs> that is a shame. I, I know I have another copy of Windows 95 on floppy disks. Let me go and grab that and see if we can maybe use that and do something with it. Alright, so we're getting out the trusty old floppy disk case. Let's open this up and see what we got. So see this right here, um, all of these disks here are Windows 95. So, and these are genuine Microsoft disks. So we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. See, there's only 13 disks. Because this is Windows for workgroups here. All of these are, are Windows for workgroups. This is MS-DOS back here. There's like a million MS-DOS disks. This is Windows 3.11, so Windows for workgroups again. Uh, that is Microsoft Windows 3.11 again. Uh, this here is... See, th this came, like, this, um, this is that whole case that I got at that, uh, garage sale. I have a separate bin of more floppy disks, but I know I don't have a Windows 95, a copy of Windows 95 in there. I, I didn't have one, um, on, uh, floppy disks in that other bin. We got Microsoft Word, I'm pretty sure... Oh yeah, so this came with a Zenith computer, that's kind of interesting. So, yes, this right here is a copy of Windows 95 that, uh, I believe, I mean, this is totally, uh, legitimate. I mean, these are the regular Microsoft disks that I was talking about. Now, if you'll notice, there's only 13 of them, and that is because these are the high-density DMF diskettes, you can probably see that right there. And basically, this DMF technology allowed, uh, Microsoft to basically reduce the number of diskettes needed to install Windows uh, on a computer. So with uh, the um, high-density DMF disk, you only need 13, whereas with the high-density non-DMF diskettes, you need 29 diskettes uh, to install Windows 95. I'm, I'm pretty certain that all of these messages that we're getting right here are because that these are counterfeit uh, non-genuine Microsoft uh, diskettes because I, I put in disk 17 um, into my computer and the cab file is there on the diskette so for whatever reason um, the, the setup is just not wanting to read the files off of this so that could definitely be because these are counterfeit so I think what we're gonna have to do is unfortunately we're not gonna be able to install Windows 95 from 29 diskettes we're gonna have to go down to 13 and I think that's what we're gonna do So we got to 9% and uh, then it asks for disk 2 instead of 2%. So that is already a major improvement. And yeah, um, also big sign, um, all of these counterfeit diskettes came in this case. So that pretty much confirms it that these uh, that these disks were counterfeit. I just don't, it's so weird because it's got the like Microsoft sticker, like it's a real diskette, but it's a freaking Fujifilm MF2D formatted um, IBM uh, compatible disc, obviously. It's just so weird. I mean, the labels are, like, off-centered. Maybe this was, like, somebody sold this to this guy? Like, maybe the, the guy that I bought this from didn't actually make this. Maybe he got it from, like, a bootleg seller that was making genuine-looking Microsoft Windows 95 diskettes, um, but just on regular, like, diskettes you can buy at the store and just trying to sell them, which is a total... Um, violation of, you know, Microsoft's copyright. <laughs> if I don't know if anybody was profiting on this or what. Alright. So that's weird. It's giving me that same copyright warning, and these are genuine. I mean, they have to be genuine. You see, they've got, like, the Microsoft 
Yeah. This disc has already been used. I guess it's already been used on another computer. March of... What? March of Dimes. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, I literally can't change it. I, I, I guess that's, that's crazy. Does it have like the... It's got the product key in there too. It's giving me that same message with these diskettes here. And these, I'm pretty certain, are not counterfeit. I mean, I guess somebody at March of Dimes used these diskettes to install them on their computer uh, because the, the floppy disk is... I mean, this is just coming... Like, this is booting off of this, of this regular floppy disk, and it's got the user information. So this is now a system file. <laughs> I don't get it, man. I really don't understand why we're having so much, so many issues here. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, you guys may have been able to tell that from that last clip, I was basically having the same exact problem with that other set of Windows 95 floppies. I really, honestly, have no idea what's causing it uh, to just get to the point where it, it was like kind of midway through putting in all those different floppy diskettes, where it just starts to not read from them basically and it's not able to find certain files that it needs off of the uh, discs and it basically just screws up the rest of the installation so i have just decided to concede defeat basically and just give up um, when it comes to installing it from floppy diskettes because i honestly have no idea why it's doing that if any of you guys might know down in the comments be sure to uh, let me know but uh, for right now, I'm going to resort to using this CD-ROM copy of Windows 95 that I have right here. Now, some of you guys may notice that uh, we have a new setup right here. You can see this is not the normal setup with uh, the classic wood desk. We're on a black desk this time. Um, and that is because that uh, I've moved. Um, I have uh, announced this over on Twitter a while ago. Um, for those of you who uh, follow me there, you guys already know, you know, the deal about my move and actually what's going on. But to give you the gist of it, I've accepted a new job in a new city in a new state uh, that I've never lived in before. Um, I'm very excited about it. And yeah, you guys may be able to tell by the size of this channel that as much as I want to, this is not something that I do full time. Like I said, I would love to do this full time, um, but just it doesn't make enough revenue for me to live off of it solely. I do still have to have a full-time job, and uh, I recently accepted this job that I uh, started working at, uh, and I'm very, very excited about it. Um, so that being said, we have a new setup for videos. You can see that we are still on the Windows 98 PC, but I wasn't able to fit it on this desk here. I actually have it uh, on the floor down there um, underneath this desk. So yes, it is kind of annoying, because uh, I am sure that you know some of you guys got used to dealing with the actual computer right next to this Although I might try to see if I can work that out in a future video um, But we're just gonna go ahead and start off with our Windows 95 install right here And I'm probably not going to record the entire thing. I know this is going to work perfectly fine because I have uh, installed Windows 95 I believe from this CD before I don't see why it's not going to work it's obviously going to be able to find everything because it's all contained on one disk as opposed to 29 different diskettes where for some reason it was causing a bunch of issues to arise um, and plus this video has been going on for about 30 minutes as it is but uh, I just wanted to go ahead and uh, end off this video with you guys and kind of let, uh, let you guys know what's been going on um, there's actually been about a two-week gap in between the previous clip that you saw at my old place and uh, now in this new setup right here it's been a, about a two-week gap so a lot of time has passed I've been uh, working on this video for a while I still have a lot of other videos that I am working on um, a lot of unofficial Windows stuff a lot of Windows customization stuff I know that you guys really Really, really like those kind of videos and I'm planning on doing some more of them I've got a lot of good ideas written down um, so stay tuned for that but for right now guys that is pretty much going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video I hope that you guys enjoyed this one if you did definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload new videos which I do every single week on this channel and as always guys I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will We'll see you in the next video.